Ladies and gentlemen, we are approaching our station at the entrance to Main Street, USA, gateway to the seven theme lands of the Magic Kingdom. As you approach the entrance, please keep your party together and have your tickets ready. Broadcasting live from 38 Studios in Providence, this is the Go Ask Mickey podcast. Helping you with the tips, tricks, and the tools needed to save you time and money on your next Disney vacation. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, send them to goaskmickey at gmail.com. Hey, what's up, Disney Nation, and welcome to another episode of the Go Ask Mickey podcast. My name is Jerry from GoAskMickey.com, and joining me, as always, is the irreverent, did I use that word already? I think so. Fantastical Fast Eddie. On this week's episode, we are going to be talking about taking advantage of the single rider line. Um, we'll get into that all, we're all about it later on in the show. But first, I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, this past weekend, or this past week, we had a the Halloween. Halloween just passed last week, last Monday, I believe. I hope everybody had a safe and happy Halloween. This is the actual first Halloween that I, me and my wife, have not actually dressed up to go out or to do anything. Normally, every year, we dress up with the kids to match whatever they're doing, or we, me and my wife, do something to match each other, and it's, you know, Halloween. A lot of people like Halloween because it, it's a family type of a thing. You get to do things as a family. You get to dress up, and you enjoy that Halloween holiday, quote-unquote holiday uh, part of it. So, it's a, it's a big hype. We every, every year we get into it, a lot of decorating, you know, you get prepped for it, you, you figure out what you're going to do, who's wearing what, and it's always last minute, run, run, grab stuff, put stuff together. But this is actually the first year that we didn't do it. The kids are getting a little older, and so we just didn't do it, and I, I felt bad that I didn't do it. I was sorry that I didn't because it, it took... It's so much more fun when you do something like that, when, it, when you're getting dressed up and enjoying it with the, with the kids, you know, it's a whole night event. It, it kind of sucked that it was on like a Tuesday night and, you know, everybody's got to work. You got to rush around. It's crazy time. So I hope everybody had a good time. Um, what else? This, uh, this week we're talking about the, the single rider line and how it is an easier way to cut down on your wait times and we're going to talk about how to use it how to you know know where to get it and using it to your you know the fullest potential so we're going to get into that a little later in a little bit but first let's get into some news let's see what's going on around the world good evening i'm ron burgundy and this is what's happening in your world tonight All right, this is what's going on around the world. Um, there is a new closing procedure in place for Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party. I can't believe we're already talking Christmas. We just had Halloween. But uh, the Magic Kingdom will be testing a new opening and closing pr- procedure on nights this holiday season when Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party is scheduled. Now, during these event nights, the park will close earlier than usual at 6 p.m. They used to close at 7. Now they're going to close at 6. Now, however, the guests who are not attending the party will be able to stay on Main Street, which is weird. I don't know how they're going to keep, you know, segregate everybody onto Main Street until 7 p.m. So you're allowed from 6 to 7 to stay on Main Street for shopping and dining and an opportunity to see a frozen holiday uh, wish fireworks spectacular, which is going to be performed 
every night of the uh, the Christmas party at 6.15 p.m. So if you're not even, if you're not even having a ticket for this, this hard ticket event, you could still see the fireworks show and they still kick you out at seven o'clock. But uh, from six to seven, you're allowed uh, only on Main Street. So that's not a bad deal for the people who are not attending because you get in a fireworks show too. So I don't know. It's, uh, I don't know how I feel about that because you, you might not like being kicked out so early because before you were kicked out at seven o'clock. Now you're kicked out at six o'clock. Well, you, you move back at six o'clock. So the main street will be open for an extra hour beginning at 6 p.m. On nights, only guests with wristbands will be allowed to enter attraction lines and others being directed to head towards Main Street. So you're going to be pushed out if you don't have a magic band. Though earlier this year, closing time on event nights is a bit of a bummer. To make up for the lost hour in the evening, the Magic Kingdom will be opening at 8 a.m. on these event days. So you're still getting that hour back. Uh, You're getting at 8 o'clock. So if you get there at 8 o'clock, rope drop. You can stay till 6 o'clock, which is a long day. And you still get a fireworks show. And the Magic Kingdom will be open at 8 o'clock. And in previous years, guests with tickets for Merry, Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party who don't have standard admission will be able to enter the park as early as 4 p.m. So people with the tickets go in at 4 o'clock. They see the 6.15 fireworks show and they are allowed to ride on the rides that everybody else isn't. So that's not a bad deal. On to the next story is there is a new restaurant coming to coming this winter uh, to Disney Spring. Now there are three new Italian restaurant concepts are coming to Disney Springs this winter. There is Mario, uh, sorry, Maria and Enzo's Enzo's Hideaway and Pizza Ponte. The first concept is a trattoria inspired by Sicily, which is with has a menu with a delightful range of family-friendly dishes. Yeah, I can't even pronounce these. Um, there's a Sicilian baked pasta and a spiral pasta with crab, all served at table sound. So that sounds really good. The second concept is Enzo's Hideaway, which is a speakeasy that will feature Prohibition era cocktails in its tunnel bar and at its tunnel bar and serve a casual menu of hearty Roman dishes. And then there is finally a Pizza Ponte, which is a fast casual restaurant serving pizza, pastries, Italian sandwiches, and espresso. That one's more up my alley. The other ones do sound great. Uh, they're all in one restaurant, so they're doing like a three-section type of a, a restaurant at this Maria and Enzo. So... Uh, If You know, you'll have three options. You could do a really nice, casual family, uh, a real quiet type bar place, and then they have a a pizza place. So that definitely sounds interesting. Uh, I would definitely take advantage of that. Uh, There's also Edison's, which is going to be opening really soon. They said the fall, which is, hello, it is fall. Uh, so it should be opening soon, and that is going to be a huge draw as far as that area of downtown downtown Disney. So that is it for the news this week. It's a very slow week. Uh, we will be right back with the t- talking of taking advantage of the single rider line and everything about it. Coming up right after this. You're listening to the Go Ask Mickey Podcast. All right, welcome back. Um, 
On this week's episode, well, well, first off, I want to thank everybody for downloading and and listening to this week's show. The numbers have been up lately, and I really appreciate everybody listening and uh, giving their input. On this week's show, we we're going to talk about the taking advantage of the single rider line, which a lot of people don't really know about. I didn't personally before I started researching this. I really didn't know much of anything about this this single rider line and I didn't know how many rides had it I didn't know a lot about it because I always go like my personal thing is I always go to Disney with a big group with my family with my friends with with so many people that the words you know someone says hey go into single rider line well no, I don't want to do that because I'm with everybody I want to be and we can't be separated like that we want to ride the rides together so to me it wasn't you know it wasn't a thought i was like yeah whatever disney single rider whatever i'm not doing that but then when i started reading up on it and i did a little bit of research on this for this show i started finding the little things that were really great ideas and how people can take advantage of this because you know, I didn't know it was even there. I didn't know you were capable of doing some of the things that I'm going to talk about in a minute. So uh, that's my take on what the single rider was for me and my family. And I want to just give you a, a few points on what it is and how, you know, what rides have it. So if you're planning on going to Walt Disney World... And you're traveling with, say, alone or with a small child or somebody. It doesn't. You don't really need to have a small group. You know, you might want to consider jumping in the single rider line at some of the most popular attractions, and you're going to avoid the wait times. Now, the single rider line is offered to solo traveler, travelers or guests wishing to enjoy an attraction on their own. The opportunity to move quickly through the line at select Disney World rides, and it allows Disney to fill every seat in a ride vehicle and maximize the number of people that ride that can serve per day. So, when we're talking about, say, Test Track, Test Track sits, I believe it's six people. If you're not filling that six people ride each time it goes out, you're not using it to the full potential. And that's why Disney adds the single rider line to fill in those spaces. Now, a single rider line offers you a chance to speed through the line and make a couple of new friends if you want. You don't have to talk to anybody. Uh, But you're going to probably ride the ride with some strangers. If you're okay with that. Um... You're often located next to the Fast Pass line. So when you're going into the Fast Pass line, right next to it, the ride offers uh, a single rider line if if it's available. Now, the rides that Disney World Resort features with these type of rides, a single rider line, is Expedition Everest, Test Track, uh, Rock and Roller Coaster, and the Tower of Terror ride. Now... Um, Disney offers a single rider line because the single rider line moves more quickly and the ride can accommodate more people per hour if every seat is used. And the single rider line reduces wait times for everybody, not just the single people, but it's uh, reducing the wait times for everybody, the fast pass and the standby line. So sending a single person through alone on a car designed for two or three people means longer wait times for everybody. So it's a huge plus. They're they're sending everybody who wants to get on that line and they're using it to its its potential. So not surprising, most of the rides offer single rider lines are the major headlining attractions and thrill rides that are the Expedition Everest, Test Track, and the Rock and Roller Coaster, as well as the Tower of Terror. Uh, Some attractions like Soarin' will fill in spaces with single riders from further back in the queue so if you're standing in line and you're you know say by yourself and if they need some a single rider to ride to fill in 
a a seat. And a lot of people don't want to split up. I've They've asked us a bunch of times when we're on a ride and they're like, all right, we need a, a one person or two people. And we're with a bunch of people. We always say no because we want to ride it all together. But if you're a single person or two people, that's perfect because, you know, you, you move quicker through the line. But they, they do look further back in the queue to add in a, you know, a dedicated single rider for that line. Now, both the Seven seven Dwarfs Mine Train and Space Mountain in the Magic Kingdom also call for frequent single riders at the loading area. And that is due to the way the ride vehicles are set up. So the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, people, you know, ride it. It sometimes it just doesn't work out, so they need another person. And it, you know, same thing with Space Mountain. They want to fill the whole thing up. They don't, those rides do not offer a single rider line, but they do frequently ask for single riders themselves. Um, another reason Disney offers guests this type of line is to access that it allows families with small children who don't meet the height requirements to take turns watching the child while the other rides the ride. So if you're with mom or dad or whoever and your little Johnny is too small to ride the ride but mom wants to ride you know Space Mountain or whatever or say Everest then you just stand in that line and she can go by herself so you're taking turns watching the kid and you could you know if I, if I want to go and my wife wants to go we can s- swap you know it's kind of like a child swap but without getting the child swap if that makes sense. Families of one person who likes roller coaster can separate while the one thrill seeker takes a quick ride without having to wait hours to see that person again. So, you know, I don't do rock and roller coaster. My wife does. So she will go and she will hit the single rider line. And 10 minutes later, she's out. She's done. And, you know, all we do is, you know, walk around or get something to eat or you know, possibly go go on another ride and meet her somewhere else. So it's an advantage for everybody, not just a single person. Um, now, there's tips and rules for the single rider lines. Now, when it comes to a special queue like this, single rider really means single. If you go through the single rider line with a companion or a person, whoever, you know, if there's two of you, you will likely be split up into different vehicles or different rows for that vehicle. So you won't be sitting together. You could be on the same ride, say test track, but you could be in the front and my wife could be in the back or vice versa. Uh, However, you can combine the single rider line with the rider switch program to further reduce the wait times if you're traveling with a spouse and a small children. So family of threes, if you have a small kid, and doesn't want to ride certain rides, you can do a rider swap, which they offer, as well as a single rider to a ride. So that that's huge. That's less waiting in these long lines. And nowadays, Disney Disney's packed. I'm sorry, people, but a lot of people are going to Disney, and they're waiting in lines. These lines get longer. And when Star Wars lands open up and Toy Story lands opens up, these lines are going to be like twice this size. You're going to be waiting like three hours just to ride a ride. That's ridiculous. Nobody wants to do that. So with these single rider lines, it's good to know which where they're available and how to use them. So um, we're going to take a quick break right now. We will be right back with the continuation of the taking advantage of a single rider line right after this. unusual behavior in your sector? They all look unusual to me. Especially that area. You're right. They do look far more bizarre than the other sectors. Should we be concerned that a lot of them have lightsabers? Who has a lightsaber? Hey, all of you down there with a lightsaber, hold them up and cheer! No need to be concerned. Why not? 
Have you ever seen a real Jedi hold up their lightsaber and say, Woo! My visor was fogged. Can you do it again? Woo! 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 Nope, still a little blurry. One more time. I know what you're doing. Get back to your patrol. I heard that. All right, all right, all right. We are back. And this week we are talking about... Uh, a single rider line at Walt Disney World. And there's no better way to squeeze through and fly through a line than using the single rider itself. We were talking about basically the tips that you can use to go through this uh, single rider experience. Now, um, the Rock and Roller Coaster is one of them. And the amazing indoor rock and roller coaster sends you screaming past the neon signs of LA with a 48 inch height requirement and it's no surprise that most intense Disney coasters a lot of people will not ride it so if there's someone in your party that is really into certain rides there's, there's always somebody there's always somebody who wants to ride this and will not ride that this allows you to smoothly go through the park without having to wait you know you could go through I've, I've seen you know the single rider line as low as like 10 minutes through like a rock and roller coaster now 10 minutes is nothing you know the, the standby line itself is probably like an hour and you're taking that and knocking that down to 10 minutes that's that's huge uh, test track is the same way test track is is really fast to, to fly right through. So there's a lot of uh, strategies and ideas that you can use. Uh, a final piece of a strategy is to consider test track now that Frozen Ever After is open and so on around the world. Now test track may be ideal spot for a single rider line. Grab a fast pass for the Frozen ride and ride Soren first thing. This way you round out your whole Epcot. So we if you rope drop Epcot, you hit Soarin', you get a fast pass later for uh, Frozen Ever After, and you single rider the test track, you will be able to get those few rides that are really the top tiered. You can't get fast passes for all of them. So this gives you the best advantage to use all, you get all three rides in, in the shortest amount of time. You know, a single rider for test track is, say, 10 minutes. You wait 20 minutes for Soarin', and you fast pass Frozen Ever After. This you, you can't lose with that. That is such an awesome touring plan that you can get through all that stuff so quickly. Um, now, sometimes it doesn't always work out, but uh, you should definitely try to uh, use these as an advantage with Everest, the same thing. You could use a single rider for that. And uh, do the... Now that Avatar is open, save your fast passes for, you know, flight. And I wouldn't do the river cruise. That's <laughs> totally not fast pass worthy. So without getting into all the details of different rides, the single rider is definitely something that you should check out next time you're at Disney World because it is available. A lot of people don't know about it and a lot of people don't take advantage of it. So I would definitely get into um, trying to use these type of a line this type of a system uh, for the ex now it's Expedition Everest uh, Test Track Rock and Roller Coaster and Tower of Terror. So uh, these are the rides that have a designated single rider line. Now, sometimes, like I said before, sometimes Seven, Mo Seven Dwarfs Mine Train and Space Mountain also have uh, calls 
from the cast members that ask you for a single rider further on in the queue. And that's something that you need to, you know, keep in mind as well. If you're willing to split up your party, take advantage of that. Um, so that is pretty much the, the whole background on the single rider. Uh, how to use it, what, what you need to do, what you need to know about it's if you use single rider as well as as well as the uh, the rider swap you will definitely make out because this is something that you can take advantage of and use to its potential because this type of ride or these rides are huge headlining rides so you will save on your weight just standing in those single rider lines you know and even if you have two or three people, if you're willing to jump in a single rider line together, you know, and you, you ride separately, but you wait for each other on the other end, you could, you know, bang out uh, uh, any of these rides in like 15, 20 minutes where the standby line itself is probably a good hour. So it's something to keep in mind, you know, and if you do have a, a small kid, you know, you could do the rider swap. There's so many advantages to this type of a, a ride system that, you know, you, you definitely want to look into something like this on your next trip. So that pretty much sums up the rider, uh, single rider program at Walt Disney World. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know at the at gmail.com. And we will be right back to close out the show in two and two. Be right back. All right, that is it for this week's show. Uh, thank you for tuning in and listening to another episode. If you could, subscribe to us on iTunes, like us on Facebook, and check us out on Twitter. I also want to mention that we'll be doing a listener question show coming up in a few weeks. Send us your questions, and we'll answer them on the show. You can send them on over to goaskmickey at gmail.com. And help us grow the Disney Nation by sharing the show. And until next time, Disney Nation, rock on. Head on over to GoAskMickey.com or check us out on Facebook or leave us a review on iTunes.